Daniel was born on January 18, 1984 in Seoul, South Korea. He came into the world with many medical issues, and between the ages of nine months and three years old, he underwent several medical procedures. During this time, and afterward, Daniel did not like to be touched. His father ran a used bookstore in South Korea. However, it didn't bring in a lot of money, and the family eventually emigrated to the United States, Maryland specifically, in 1992. Daniel was eight years old at this time, and just as he was probably beginning to adjust to his new life in a new country, the family moved to Fairfax County, Virginia in 1993. Several of the family members began to work very long and arduous hours at a dry cleaning business. His parents tried very hard to socialize their son, signing him up for various extracurricular activities, yet still, Daniel rarely ever spoke. In elementary school, other children made fun of him because he could barely speak the English language. My memories of him are being alone, being isolated. More importantly, though, just being pretty invisible. Uh, nothing, you know, a person that no one really noticed. That immediately next to me. I just remember he was really, really quiet. And we used to try to, like, okay, let's try to get him to interact. And, hey, so what are you doing this weekend? Are you going to the movies? Do you have a girlfriend? Like, just asking any questions that we would ask any other high school guy. He would communicate with us, either with a head nod or... I described it as a grunt. His sister was also teased. However, she seemed to handle the harassment better, and she went on to graduate from Princeton in 2004. Daniel started counseling in the summer, just before the seventh grade. As a young man, he was incredibly introverted and shy. Daniel attended the Center for Multicultural Human Services and was ultimately diagnosed with selective mutism. When he was in eighth grade, Daniel started to write about his homicidal and suicidal thoughts. A prescription antidepressant regimen began, and at first, Daniel responded well to the medications. But after about a year, he stopped taking them. Freshman year, Daniel attended Centerville High School, but transferred to Westfield High School for his sophomore year. His grades were excellent, and there weren't any behavioral issues. Daniel was just painfully shy. Counseling continued through his junior year, and in June of 2003, he graduated from the honors program with a 3.5 GPA. I think the thing that was most notable that I always have remembered was the pain of his shyness. No eye contact from the uh, nodding. He would break out in his sweat. You know, that he would seem to really freeze, that he really was unable to respond. Really a palpable pain, you just with his anxiety, if any question was put to him. Daniel decided he would stay in state, so he chose Virginia Tech University for college. Counselors and his parents felt strongly against this choice. They felt that Daniel would struggle in such a large school. But he disagreed. So in August of 2003, he started taking classes at Virginia Tech, majoring in business information systems. During freshman year at college, Daniel got pretty good grades. His parents made weekly trips to visit their son, and despite his positive grades, they were concerned with his lack of a social life. He made no friends and spoke to no one. Classmates tried to strike up conversations trying to get to know Daniel, but he just would not talk to people. The small interactions Daniel did have were often strange and made others look at him oddly. In fact, Daniel once told his roommate that he had a girlfriend whose name was Jelly. You heard that right. He elaborated about his imaginary girlfriend, too, saying that she was a supermodel that lived in outer space. Once, he asked his roommate to leave their dorm because he wanted to be alone with Jelly, who was coming to visit him. I'd talk to him a lot, but never get anything back, and that'd be quite frustrating. But finally, one Friday, we asked him if he wanted to go to a frat party with us, and he agreed. From what I could tell, that was his first time being around that type of environment. As the night went on, he um, drank more and got a little more open with us, told us about his imaginary girlfriend, and he called her his imaginary girlfriend. She called him Spanky, and he called her Jelly. Sophomore year started in the fall of 2004, and Daniel managed to stay at Virginia Tech with good enough grades and no social life to speak about. 
During the school year, Daniel moved out of the dorms and into an apartment with another classmate, who was a senior and never around. Daniel became interested in writing and soon changed majors to English at the beginning of his junior year at Virginia Tech. The junior year began in the fall of 2005. Still, Daniel had no social life whatsoever, but he got good passing grades. The junior year saw Daniel submitting a proposal for a book to a publishing house. However, they rejected his idea, and this deeply depressed him. He moved back into the dorms and became disinterested in writing. His family noticed that Daniel's depression became worse. He had a bad attitude, and was even quieter, if such a thing was possible. One of Daniel's sweet mates attempted to get him to come out to parties, but Daniel didn't fit in, and rarely went. However, one time when he did actually leave the dorm and go to a party, he went into a random girl's room and stabbed at the carpet. It was incredibly bizarre behavior. We uh, went back to a friend of mine's dorm, and um, Sung kind of goes without prompting, you know, you want to see something cool, and that was really unusual for him to initiate conversation. And he pulled out a knife and just started stabbing the carpet, kind of slow and deliberate. I guess he was trying to grab attention. In poetry class, the writing started to display violence, and his actions in class, such as taking pictures of classmates under his desk, resulted in his removal from the class. Teachers and his parents urged Daniel to go back into counseling, but he refused. The university even received a complaint from a female student that Daniel was sending her disturbing and strange instant messages. In December of 2005, Daniel casually mentioned to a classmate his thoughts of suicide. This occurred right after the female student made a complaint against him. He even typed an email saying, quote, Might as well kill myself now. The classmate was becoming concerned about Daniel and reported this interaction with the police. The court ordered that he receive a psychological exam and stay at least one night in the hospital for evaluation and treatment, which he did from December 13th to the 14th. During this stay, Daniel claimed he wasn't seriously suicidal. He said he was just joking. The whole thing was a misunderstanding. Doctors bought this story and they released him, saying he was not a danger to himself or others. No danger to himself or others, yet he never even had one true friend. He rarely spoke, and he wrote about violence, suicide, and homicide. I had no indication that something like this was coming. Really no indication of any kind of, like, crazy tendencies at all. He just seemed like a shy, antisocial person. In the spring of 2006, Daniel was enrolled in a creative writing class where he wrote of a man that hated the students where he went to school. This fictitious man was going to kill all of the students and himself. If ever such a waving, glaring red flag existed, this was it. He literally wrote about exactly what he did. In February of 2007, Daniel ordered himself a 22 caliber Walther P-22 handgun from an online retailer called TGS Com Inc. A week after he made this order, Daniel went to the JDN Palm Brokers in Blacksburg, Virginia, where he picked up this new firearm. On March 12, 2007, Daniel rented a van from the Enterprise at the Roanoke Regional Airport, which he kept for nearly a month. On March 13th, he bought a 9mm Glock handgun at Roanoke Firearms. Because Daniel was released from a psychiatric stay as not being a danger to himself or others, there was no mental health record, thereby allowing him to legally purchase the gun as he passed the required background check. He paid $571 for the gun, and it is likely his plan for destruction was forming in that very moment. Daniel went to a shooting range, spending around an hour practicing shooting. This was March 22nd. Over the next two weeks, Daniel started loading up on ammunition. Sunday, April 15th, 2007, was much like every other Sunday. At least it appeared so on the surface. Daniel had his weekly phone call with his family, who was still living in Fairfax County. The call went normal, with no hint of what was going to be coming. Facts about Daniel's childhood came from interviews with his immediate family. Writings that were later discovered spoke of his strange yearning to, quote, 
Repeat Columbine. Daniel mostly went to bed every night at 9 p.m. sharp, unless there was wrestling on. He loved watching wrestling and would always stay up later for it. A real loner, he rode his bike around late at night when he stayed up. A single solitary young man, riding around, possibly contemplating a mass murder-suicide. It appears that Daniel tried to fit in, at least by appearance. He wore Virginia Tech hats and t-shirts and jeans. However, despite growing up as a highly intelligent young man, he was in honors classes and advanced placement classes in high school. Daniel referred to himself as, quote, question mark, and seems to have possessed no self-esteem or confidence. In uh, my British literature class, uh, he sat in the back corner and he didn't introduce himself as anything but question mark. And of all the questions the teacher prompted when she asked him to introduce himself, that was the only one he answered. First, he just seemed shy to us, but once he really went out of his way to make sure that nobody could interact with him, it did come off as arrogant. This horrific shooting affected nearly every member of the Virginia Tech campus. Over half of the students there reported knowing one of the deceased victims. A sister of one of the victims was a Princeton graduate, and therefore, Princeton held a candlelight vigil in honor and memory. It was a genuinely touching scene. Daniel's parents later released a statement, which apologized for their son's actions. They will forever carry their grief for the son and his actions. Classes resumed on Monday, April 23rd, and graduation was held four weeks later. Mental health professionals were present during graduation, which is fantastic, but most of these students and faculty will continue to suffer every day, in some form or or fashion. Some will struggle with grief, survivor's guilt, and fear. Some will turn to drugs, alcohol, and food to drown or numb their pain. Worse, some will seek suicide as an alternative. We must remember the victims that have died and those that live. We must find a way to improve mental health services and come together collectively to seek a solution to these horrible tragedies that could be avoided. Please remember, if you see something, say something. It could seem insignificant, but it could also be the very tip that could save lives. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Active Shooter, the podcast. Remember, if you see something, say something. There's no telling how many lives you may be saving. A huge thank you to Darren Curtis, who composed some of the music used in this episode. Check him out at darrencurtismusic.com, D-A-R-R-E-N-C-U-R-T-I-S, music.com. Active shooter. Reports of an active shooter. Active shooter. Active shooter with mass casualty incidents. Make sure to check us out on social media. We have a discussion group on Facebook. Just search for Active Shooter, the podcast discussion group. You can also find us on Instagram at Active the Podcast and Twitter at Podcast Active. For just $1 a month, you can get access to ad-free episodes, early release episodes when available, and a shout-out on the show. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Active the Podcast. Thank you, and be safe.